Wholesale Funding A Weak Link in the Financial System In the fall of 2008, the storied investment bank Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. The week that followed was a scary one. Stocks plunged in value, investors panicked, and regulators scrambled to understand how to lessen the damage. But the crisis continued, and as time wore on, the damage on Wall Street bled into the real economy, Main Street. Factories shuttered, businesses soured, and millions of people found themselves without a job. It's been about six years since that terrifying week in the fall of 2008. Over that time, some very smart people have tried to understand what exactly went wrong. And generally, the conclusion has been this. Too many risky mortgages were sold, packaged, and repackaged into opaque asset-backed securities and eventually held in massive quantities all throughout the financial sector. But is this the full story? To be sure, subprime mortgages and asset-backed securities were at the center of the crisis. But there was a key breakdown in the wholesale funding market that we think was every bit as important. And the scary part is this. The market still represents a major vulnerability in the financial system today. The wholesale funding market is an integral part of the modern financial system, but it is confusing and complex and not many people know much about it. Our goal today is to change that. To do that, to illustrate just what wholesale funding is and what its role in the financial crisis was, we will use an analogy that is easier to grasp, that of a typical shoe company. So here is our shoe company. Let's call it Snikey. Now, what does Snikey do? Well, like most shoe companies, it buys raw materials from suppliers, things like rubber, leather, string, and plastic, and it uses those raw materials to make shoes that it eventually sells to customers. Okay, that's simple enough. But in real life, it's a bit more complicated. For one thing, it takes time for Snikey to make and distribute all those shoes. During that time, Snikey has a whole bunch of expenses that it has to stay on top of. Things like employee salaries, electricity bills, and replacement parts for its machines. So in order to keep operating, in order to make shoes for next month's delivery, Snikey needs to borrow some money. Okay, so how exactly does Snikey borrow money? Well, it could get a traditional bank loan, but those tend to be costly and take a long time to arrange. So is there a cheaper and more convenient way for Snikey to get a short-term loan? As it turns out, there is. Something called a collateralized loan. In this case, Snikey receives a loan and offers up something of value, its shoes for example, to protect the lender in case it is unable to repay the loan. The lender likes this because, well, there's a pretty large market for Snikey shoes and it knows that it could easily sell those shoes to get its money back if Snikey fails to repay the loan. So everyone wins in this case. The lender gets to safely use some of its extra money to earn a decent interest rate, and Snikey gets some short-term funding on a pretty cheap basis. Okay, great. But how does a shoe company like Snikey relate to an investment bank like Lehman Brothers? I mean, one sells shoes and the other, well, we're not really sure what they sell. As it turns out, though, in many ways an investment bank does have a similar business model. In simple terms, it buys raw materials from suppliers in order to produce a final product. In the case of an investment bank, the raw materials are loans from other banks all over the country, and they are combined to create a final product called a mortgage-backed security, for example. And as in the case of Snikey, an investment bank like Lehman would like to start buying more raw materials in order to start producing more final products before it has received payment from its end customers. To do that, Lehman needs to borrow some money. Like Snikey, Lehman uses its inventory as collateral because that keeps the cost of the loan down. For a firm like Snikey, this was called collateralized lending. For an investment bank like Lehman Brothers, it's pretty much the same thing, but it goes by a different name. Wholesale funding. Okay, so now that we understand what wholesale funding is, let's ask the bigger question. What was its role in the financial crisis? First, leading up to the crisis, investment banks became more and more reliant on this type of funding. Second, Subprime mortgages began defaulting around the country at an alarming rate. Now remember, these mortgages were the raw materials in Lehman's final product, the mortgage-backed securities. And as mortgage defaults increased, the value of those mortgage-backed securities started to fall, and lenders were less willing to accept them as collateral. Lehman walked a tightrope for a few months, borrowing money wherever it could, but lenders were in short supply. Lending to Lehman was simply too risky. Eventually, Lehman couldn't meet payroll or fund its purchases of raw materials, and on September 15, 2008, it filed for bankruptcy. The Lehman bankruptcy sent shockwaves throughout the financial system. Lenders who had money in Lehman Brothers took major losses, and the collateral that lenders received was worth significantly less than what was owed to them. And Lehman wasn't the only company using bad mortgage-backed securities as collateral. Basically, everyone was. Lenders who had been accepting similar collateral from other banks, banks like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, began to reevaluate that decision. And most of them decided it was too risky to keep lending like this, so they stopped. And because the banks relied so heavily on wholesale funding, business at these huge investment banks froze. 
just completely stopped. Now, eventually, dramatic interventions by the Federal Reserve, the Treasury, and other government agencies brought us back from the brink of collapse, and things seemed to be going okay today. But the wholesale funding system, a system that was key to Lehman's bankruptcy and the financial crisis more broadly, has not fundamentally changed. Now, of course, many things have changed. For example, the securities that investment banks are dealing in now are much safer than the subprime securities that were popular during the crisis. And true, investment banks like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley converted to bank holding companies, a move that gives them some greater government protection and oversight. But still, they finance themselves in large part through the short-term wholesale funding market. And we think that represents a major vulnerability. And so, as our story of wholesale funding comes to a close, we'll leave you with this. The causes of the financial crisis were numerous and complicated, but without question, the wholesale funding market played a big part in it all. Our sincere hope is that this video has shed some light on all of that.